While you may be familiar with gaming's vast pantheon of ne'er-do-wells, there's a decent chance you don't know what the actors who play them look like. These are the gorgeous faces behind gaming's most sinister sinners, psychopaths, and supervillains. Death Stranding sees protagonist Sam traversing the ruins of America. This means navigating dangerous environments or hiding from ghostly BTs or beach things and avoiding the mules and homo demon terrorists populating the game world. Needless to say, Higgs, the big bad head honcho, makes those fools look like amateurs. Lucky loser gets to put an end to this rinse and repeat over once and for all. Thankfully, the actor lending both his voice and face to the leader of the homo demons is considerably less volatile than his virtual counterpart. Troy Baker is a veteran of video game voice acting, having lent his talents to a variety of good guys – Joel in The Last of Us, Booker DeWitt in Bioshock Infinite, and not-so-good guys Pagan Min in Far Cry 4, the more in the medium. Interestingly enough, Death Stranding wasn't Baker's first time working with creator and video game author Hideo Kojima, as the actor lent his talent to Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, portraying a younger Revolver Ocelot. During Death Stranding's launch event, Baker opened up about the traditional hero-slash-villain dichotomy. He explained to video game journalist Jeff Keighley, There's forces that act for your hero and forces that act against. There's no heroes and no villains, because from the other side and from the other perspective, I'm the hero. There are family-friendly video games meant to be played with loved ones, parents, siblings, even one spouse. But then there are games like Catherine, a 2011 Atlas title which combined puzzle-solving gameplay with elements of dating sims and a hefty helping of psychological and supernatural horror is the definition of risque, mostly thanks to its namesake, Catherine. I'm not staring. You're a bad liar. Early on, main protagonist Vincent, voiced incidentally by Troy Baker, is torn between two women. Catherine, his longtime girlfriend, and the mysterious Catherine. The former is a mature, family-oriented woman. The latter isn't. Vincent meets Catherine with a C at a bar, and they quickly and drunkenly get to bump in uglies, endangering his relationship with Catherine with a K and promptly plunging Vincent into a literal living nightmare. The voice behind those big blue anime peepers is none other than voice actor supreme Laura Bailey. As talented as she is diverse, Bailey has played virtual ventriloquist to hundreds of video game characters, from MJ in Marvel Spider-Man to the polarizing Abby in The Last of Us Part 2 to Gears 5's Kate Diaz. Gamers with one foot stuck firmly in the anime sphere might also recognize her as the longtime voice of Dragon Ball Z's Trunks. From Darth Vader to Jabba the Hutt to Darth Maul and countless others, Star Wars is a franchise known for its villains. So when a Sith Inquisitor named Second Sister was revealed to be the main antagonist of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, casual fans may have been left scratching their heads. The more fanatical of the fandom, however, might have recognized the villainess from her Star Wars canon premiere in a 2018 issue of the Darth Vader comic series. Fallen Order sees Second Sister, aka Trilla Saduri, put on the trail of protagonist and Jedi fugitive Cal Kestis. To make a long story short, it's eventually revealed that Saduri, a former Jedi, was abandoned by her master, Sia Junda, only to be tortured by the Empire. Her mind warped by the dark side, Saduri was twisted into a sadistic Jedi hunter. Second Sister's voice actor, Elizabeth Gruyon, is a newcomer to video game acting. Her only other video game voice credit is Nisha, a companion character in the game Technomancer. Still, she seems to have enjoyed her time portraying the sinister Second Sister. We can literally run and chase each other and jump and take swings at each other, so it's the closest to playing in my backyard at eight years old of any job I've ever had. That said, she's graced a small screen in a number of television roles, appearing in shows like Scandal, Grey's Anatomy, Criminal Minds, and Lucifer. To put the popularity of the Halo franchise's Cortana into perspective, all one needs to do is recall how the AI's name was lent to Microsoft's Siri rival in order to convey a helpful, intelligent, intuitive character that you get to know and trust over time, via NBC News. That's not how one might categorize old Corti's behavior circa Halo 5. Of responsibility for the galaxy shelters all, but only the created are its masters. Long story short, Cortana entered a state of rampancy in Halo 4, which caused her to essentially overthink herself to madness. She managed to avoid slipping too far into the corrupted state, but following a too complex to explain here series of events, she decided that AI like herself were meant to enforce order throughout the galaxy. Yikes. Jen Taylor, Cortana's voice actor, has been portraying the babe in blue since 2001's Halo Combat Evolved. 
though she'd already been lending her voice acting chops to nearly a dozen titles, like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, and Luigi's Mansion, to name a few, before she landed the long-time gig. While Taylor has appeared on the TV series Leverage and Everything Sucks, she's also portrayed the big bad Salem in the anime Ruby. Taylor is set to return to the Halo-verse as Cortana in the Halo TV series. Ah, Mortal Kombat, where would the gamers of yesteryear be without the joys of tearing beating hearts from chess and blasting foes flesh off courtesy of that loudmouthed Sindel? The MK games are a treasure trove of treacherous tyrants, the most tyrannical of which has got to be Shao Kahn. Introduced in 1993's Mortal Kombat 2, the hulking conqueror is one of the series' most ubiquitous and devastating baddies, and the incarnation that players traded blows with in 2019's Mortal Kombat 11 is no exception. Empires must expand or die. <laughs> The difference between this version of the Outworld antagonist and his earlier incarnations? Save for this guy's more reptilian vibe, which NetherRealm senior character artist Solomon Gaten showed off on his ArtStation account, MK11's Khan marks the villain's first portrayal by Nigerian-American voice actor E.K. Amadi. Though his name might not be as recognizable as some of the other actors on this list, Amadi boasts an unquestionably impressive and diverse range of video game performances, from William Lake in Death Stranding to Aaron Davis, aka The Prowler, in Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Damn, Miles. We're a skinny-ass kid. You hit hard. Uncle Aaron? Amadi has also lent his voice to a ton of TV shows and movies, including Love, Death and Robots, Avengers Assemble, and the animated film Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, in which he played Jax. Pars Ortega Andra Day had it rough. In Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, not only is it suggested that she was tortured by Skullface, but the Phantom Pain prologue showcases the removal of a bomb from her belly, and then the detonation of a second bomb located… elsewhere. Still, she wasn't exactly innocent either. Enter 2010's Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. The short and sweet answer of it goes like this. Paz, real name Pacifica Ocean, is a highly trained cipher agent posing as a peace-loving high school student. She notably stole Metal Gear Zeke and threatened to frame protagonist Big Boss by bombing the East Coast. When all is said and done, peace is nothing but a fantasy. A game is a game. You either win or you lose. She'd hoped this would cause the public to label his organization, MSF, an extremist cult. Needless to say, she was defeated by Big Boss, and then all that belly bomb stuff went down in Ground Zeroes. If Paz's voice sounds familiar, that's because she's played by Tara Strong, a voice actor who's portrayed many beloved childhood cartoon characters. Bubbles and the Powerpuff Girls. The Bubbles you know is gone! I'm hardcore now! Timmy in Fairly Odd Parents, and Raven in Teen Titans, among loads of others. She also played Harley Quinn in the Arkham games, a role that she is set to reprise in 2022's Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Run, Cloud. Run away. You have to leave. You have to live. Any RPG gamer worth their materia collection knows the story of Final Fantasy VII Sephiroth, the former soldier first-class operative turned psychopathic supervillain and self-proclaimed god, killer of Aerith and ultimate mama's boy, Sephiroth has gone down in RPG history as one of the most badass and bonkers bad guys in gaming. And while his original iteration didn't boast any spoken dialogue, the FF7 remake version of Old Sephi isn't afraid to deliver an ominous line or two every now and again. And ominous those lines are, delivered by the ever-talented Tyler Hecklin, who TV fans might recognize as the Arrow vs. Superman. He's appeared as a character in Supergirl, Arrow, The Flash, Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, and 2021's Superman and Lois, alongside Elizabeth Tulloch. In the early 2000s, he played baseball prodigy Martin Brewer in Seventh Heaven, after which he'd go on to portray Derek Hale in the supernatural drama Teen Wolf from 2011 to 2017. Hecklin has also appeared in a slew of smaller TV roles, popping up in police procedural shows like Castle and CSI Miami. Mr. Negative, born Martin Lee, is another one of those villains that it's hard not to feel sorry for. Injected with the experimental Devil's Breath Serum, the transformation that then-young Lee underwent caused an explosion that killed both of his parents. Eventually, after amassing a considerable fortune in China, he opened the Feast Homeless Shelter. Hey, Martin, so sorry I'm late. You were right on time. Just keep her distracted while we get everything ready. Sounds all well and good until you remember that Mr. Negative is both the leader of the Demon's Gang and is obsessed with exacting revenge on Mayor Norman Osborn, whom he blames for his parents' death. 
Stephen O. Young and Martin Lee might look and sound alike, but we'd say that the former is a lot more adjusted than the latter. Talking to ComicBookMovie.com, O. Young dished on portraying one of the few major characters of Asian descent in the Spider-Man universe, saying it was a dream come true. He also enjoyed the process of exploring the depths of his villainous character, saying, "...bringing out the human side to the monster was the most satisfying part of the job." An accomplished voice actor, a youngest lent his talent to games like Cyberpunk 2077, Death Stranding, and Fallout 76. He's also appeared in live-action shows, including How to Get Away with Murder, The Last Ship, and DC's Legends of Tomorrow. If there's one thing aspiring baddies need to know before they try their luck at super villainy in the Resident Evil universe, it's this. Do not work with Albert freaking Wesker. Apparently, though, Excella Gioni didn't get the memo. Although the director of Tricell Africa proved invaluable to Wesker, he would go on to betray Gioni. How? Why, by injecting her with a virus that would reject her DNA and transform her into a kaiju-sized monstrosity of flailing tentacles and massive pulsating postules, of course. Luckily for fans with a healthy fear of devastating viruses and eldritch horrors, Nina Ferrin, who provided both voiceover and motion capture for the dubious businesswoman, looks a whole lot more like Exella pre-mutation. The preparations are almost complete. Then we can leave. Good. Though she's appeared in a number of shorts, TV movies, and shows, including Entourage, How to Get Away with Murder, and Revenge, Resident Evil 5's Excella marks Ferrin's sole video game credit. Still, it seems as though she enjoyed the experience, telling Resident Evil Realm that she was thrilled to be a part of such a popular game series. She added that, while she doesn't play many video games, now that she's in one, she's definitely going to start. As an actor, you know you've done a bang-up job when you inspire the character that you wind up portraying. In a G4X Play segment, Michael Mando, the face and voice of Far Cry 3's Vaz, revealed that when he auditioned for the role, the character of Vaz did not exist. He went on to explain that, while Ubisoft had a vague idea of the character's physical and behavioral traits, Mando flipped the script on them with his performance. The part was initially written as 6'6", 280 pounds, very sociopathic, stoic, and I gave him anything but what they were looking for. Incidentally, Mando didn't get the part. However, he did eventually receive a call from the Far Cry 3 devs who decided to develop a whole new character based upon his audition, a character that looked just like him and shared the same insane vibes as his take on the original role. I'm sorry, I don't like the way you are looking at me. Mando's performance as Vaz might delight video game fans, but the Canadian actors got a little something for everyone in his diverse repertoire. From nail-biter dramas like Orphan Black, The Killing, and Better Call Saul to campy affair like Psych. He's even popped up in the MCU, where he played Mac Gargan, aka Scorpion, in Spider-Man Homecoming. 